Hey everybody, welcome to Video Notes 2.1. We're going to look at electron configuration. We know where the electrons are, but now we're going to learn about how they fill up an atom. So make sure you read chapter 11, sections 9 through 7, 7 through 9, and read those pages. All right? Woohoo, funny. Mm -hmm, funny. Okay, so. Where are the electrons? We know they're outside the nucleus and they're not crashing into the nucleus because they have quanta of energy. So they're quantized and they have enough energy to stay out of the nucleus, but they do go into energy levels. Okay. Now those levels are called levels one, two, three, and four, principal energy levels. And so the places where you find them are um, probability areas. And in the first level, there's only one. It's called an S orbital. And so you can um, put two electrons in the first energy level. Second energy level, there's S orbitals and P sub orbitals, so two sub levels. Level two, two sub energy, level two, two sub levels, four total orbitals for a maximum of eight electrons in that energy level. Third energy level, three sub levels. So the number of orbitals is nine, and the number of electrons is 18 max. And then you get to the fourth energy level, where you could have four sub levels. Uh, for 16 orbitals, and that means 32 electrons could fit into that energy level. Now, if you want to think of it like this, realize that these are just representing the energy levels. First energy level has one sublevel. Second energy level has two, S and P. Third energy level has three sublevels, S, P, and D. All right? So a better model would be um, this. Okay? So these are probability clouds called orbitals. And you can see the sphere in the middle around the tiny, tiny nucleus. That's the 1S sublevel. Small, compact, near the nucleus. So only two electrons can fit there. And then second energy level has a sphere, but it also has these, um, looks like, um, figure eight lobes. Okay, and there's three of them. So that means that uh, two electrons can fit into each of those. Then you'd have the third energy level would have a sphere and the P sublevels, and also the D sublevels, which look like these. So this is all on top of each other, and all of these are our orbitals that represent the probability of finding an electron in that area. So what we do to describe where the electrons are is we use what's called orbital diagrams and electron configurations. Right? And the rules we use to show where the electrons are are fill the lowest energy sublevel first, um, and then an S sublevel, each sublevel um, has orbitals in it, and then each orbital can hold two electrons. So the S sublevel can hold six, two electrons. P sublevel can hold six because there's three um, orbitals. The D sublevel can hold 10 electrons because there's five uh, orbitals in that sublevel. You can only put two electrons in an orbital, and they have to have opposite spin. And then only one electron um, goes into an orbital sublevel at a time until they're half filled. Before, all are half filled before doubling up. Okay, oh look, it's an orbital diagram. So an orbital diagram are boxes or circles that represents places where electrons can go. So these circles represent an orbital. The lowest energy is the 1s orbital. So what element is this right here? Well, we're going to use arrows to be electrons. So if you want to know what element is, you have to count the electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. This has 19 electrons, so that means it has 19 protons in the nucleus. So this is potassium. It has potassium as atomic number 19. Okay. How about this next one? So potassium. How about this next one? Well, it's a different representation, but the boxes now are the orbitals, and the sublevels are labeled below. Um, so they fill up in energy, but we can write them across the page as well. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 total electrons. What element has 16 electrons? Well, the element that has 16 protons, and so that is sulfur. sulfur. Okay, so you should be able to look in an orbital diagram, count the arrows, and figure out if it's an element, what it is, or if it's an ion, we can do that too. We'll practice that. So those are orbital diagrams. An electron configuration is a different way to tell where the electrons are, but it's similar, except you don't draw boxes. You just use numbers to represent the electrons. So this is sulfur again, 16 protons, so we need 16 electrons. So we say 1s, we say 2 because there's two electrons in that orbital. Then we say 2s, 2 because there's two electrons in that orbital. Now we go to the 2p sublevel where there are three orbitals, 
So there's a total of six electrons. 3s has two electrons in it, and 3p has one, two, three, four electrons in it. So this is still sulfur, 16 electrons, 16 protons in the nucleus, and this is called an electron configuration. Electron configuration. Electron configuration. All right. So let's see um, a diagram that will help you know how to fill up those orbitals. Um, it's a kind of a way to memorize it. So start by writing this down. Make sure you line these up, put the numbers in the right spot, and then you draw arrows. And the arrows show, start the arrow, end the arrow, shows which direction to fill the orbital. So the 1s fills first. After that's full, you got to come back and draw another arrow. So then 2s fills up. Then 2p and 3s fill up. 3p and 4s fill up. 3d, 4p, 5s. 4d, 5p, 6s. 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. 5f, 6d, 7p. Okay? So you should be able to draw that. You're welcome to draw that anytime. And then you can use it um, if you draw it. I'll teach you another way to know how to fill them, but this way it works. Okay? So let's practice. Let's do the electron configuration for a sodium atom. So I look up sodium on the periodic table and find its symbol is Na. I know it has 11 protons because its atomic number is 11. If it's an atom, it also has 11 electrons because they equal each other. So I start here and I say, all right, I'm going to fill up the 1s orbital because that's what sodium does, but you can only put two electrons there. After that's full, I go down here and say, okay, 2s orbital is going to fill up. You can put two electrons in an s orbital. Then you go back to the bottom of the arrow, 2p orbital. p orbitals, there's three of them, so you can fill six, put six electrons in. And then that takes care of 10 electrons. So sodium's 11th electron is going to be in the 3s orbital. And I can stop right there because if I add up these numbers at the top, I find out there are 11. It's 11 electrons. That's sodium. Woo, look at us. Right. Now let's do the electron configuration for a sodium ion. Before this unit's over, you're going to know what kind of ion sodium forms, but for now, I'm going to tell you what kind of ion for sodium forms. Sodium forms a plus one ion. Plus one means that it still has 11 protons in its nucleus, 11 protons, and then it used to have 11 electrons, but now it only has 10 electrons, and that's why it's a plus one charge. You do the same thing, but I'm going to stop when I use up 10 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Done, because that's 10 electrons, and so that takes care of sodium, but it's a sodium ion. Oh, look, it's a cat ion. Okay, let's do the orbital diagram for potassium atom. All right, so notice this is a different word, orbital diagram. So I'm going to put the symbol for potassium, put its atomic number so I know how many protons it has, and says it's an atom, I know there's 19 electrons as well. So I'm going to do a box and call that 1s and put the electrons in. Now I have to do a box for 2s and put the electrons in. And then I'll do three boxes for 2p because the 2p sublevel has three um, orbitals. So that's um, fill them one at a time, come back and fill it all up. That takes care of 10 electrons. Okay, I'm getting there. After 2p... Notice the 3s orbital fills next. So I'll put two electrons in there. I have to fill that one before I go to that back down to here. I'm at the 3. Oops. I should probably make a box, right? Now this is going to be a 3p sublevel. Make sure to label your sublevels. So I draw three boxes because there's three orbitals in 3p sublevel. Okay, so that's um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that gives me 18 total electrons that have been accounted for. And now I'm going into the four at fourth energy level, S sub-level, to put that 19th electron. Okay, so electron configurations are the numbers and the letters, and um, orbital diagrams are the boxes and the letters, okay, and numbers. You can also do all of this with just a periodic table, because a periodic table has what we call periods, and there's seven of them, all right? And then it shows um, blocks of uh, um, areas where certain, or certain orbitals are filling. So over on this side, it's called the S block. Okay. Over here, we have the D block, the P block, and the F block. And if you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, there are um, six total elements that use the P block to put their electrons over here. 
and two in each orbital, that's how many six total electrons can fit in the C P sublevel. If you count across here, you'd get 10. If you count over here, you get two, and over here you get 14. So we can use a periodic table just like we did for um, potassium. Um, I mean, just like we did for the other ones, except now that we um, we can use a periodic table instead of using the filling diagram. Let's do it um, sodium again just to see. Here's sodium. We know we need 11 protons. Um, sodium would be right here on the periodic table. Okay, so we got to get to 11 electrons. So we have to start with the 1s. So I'll say 1s, and I got one, two. All right, that's filled up. Done. So then I go to the second period on the periodic table. I find 2s, and I get one, two, two electrons. Done. That filled up four. So I have to jump over to here. Notice I'm still in the second period on the periodic table, and now I'm in the P block. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So two P, six electrons, and I'm done. Stop right there. So then I have to go to the third energy level, represented by the third period on the periodic table. But there's sodium right there. I only need to put one in. Oh, look at the S. <laughs> move that one over. Come on, Harvey, you can do it. Yay, I did it. Okay. So you could use the periodic table as long as you count down here. Here's what I want you to notice, that the fourth energy level um, fills after the third energy level, but before the third energy level D sublevel. Now, when we saw that picture a while back, oh, I'm going back. Where are you going back? All right, we saw these. Um, and then what happens is that once you get to the fourth energy level, the uh, energy levels start to get closer and closer to each other. So the 4S sublevel will overlap and fill before the 3D sublevel. So that's why when you look at the periodic table, you're in the third energy level when you're filling the first D sublevel. We'll keep practicing, okay? Is there a shorter way to do this? I mean, what if we had to do an element over here? We'd have to go all the way through to boom, get to that. There's a shorter way. It's called the noble gas electron configuration. And so you find the element in group 18. This is group 18 on the periodic table called the noble gases. You find the element that comes before the element you're working on, and you use its electron configuration, uh, use its symbol to represent the electron configuration to that point. So let's like, do an example. Germanium, all right? So those of you who don't know yet, germanium is GE, all right? It's element number 32 on the periodic table. So it says 32 protons, so there's 32 electrons. All right, so we would be right here on the periodic table. Um, this is 32. We go to column 18. You can only use elements in column 18. I find argon. So I could put argon in brackets, and that takes care of all of the electrons up to argon, so the first 18 electrons. And then if you number down, after argon, element 37 starts in the fourth energy level, and I'm in the S block, so I get 4S2. And then I'm here. Remember, this is the third energy level D block, and I use all 10 um, I use all five orbitals, so it's 10 electrons, and then I get two here and here, and we're back to the fourth energy level, S block, I'm uh, sorry, P block, and there's two electrons that go in there. So this is called shorthand because the brackets take care of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 18 electrons for argon. And so instead of writing all that out, I could put argon in brackets. You can only do that with these elements over there. Okay. All right. Valence electrons. Valence electrons are outermost electrons. All right. So you got your nucleus. You got your electron. They're the ones farthest away from the nucleus. So how do you know a valence electron? By looking at the electron configuration. You find the highest energy level. Okay. So here's an example. Oh, look. It's chlorine. Hi, chlorine. Chlorine has this electron configuration. The highest energy level chlorine uses to put its electrons is the third energy level, right? So I find the th highest energy level, and I add up the S electrons and the P electrons in that energy level, and I get chlorine has seven valence electrons, okay? So that's all you do to find valence electrons is you look at the electron configuration, find the highest energy level used, and then add up the S and the P electrons in that energy level only. Okay, look, it's calcium. All right, so there's 20 electrons because there's 20 protons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Boom, good. 
So next, to get valence electrons, I find the highest energy level, fourth energy level, right? And then I count the S and P electrons that the element calcium has in that energy level. And there are no P electrons in the fourth energy level for calcium, so calcium has two valence electrons. Woo, yay, we figured it out. The next element's nickel, all right? So valence electrons, highest energy level is the fourth energy level. Um, S and P electrons in that energy level is up oh, two, two valence electrons. So you might be saying to yourself, hey, self, um, well, won't all of the elements in this middle area only have two valence electrons because they didn't use their P orbitals yet in that energy level? The answer is yeah and yeah. But there's also some D electrons that all of those elements have that can be um, used if electrons are needed to, to make bonds, okay? So what do valence electrons do? They help determine charge. Um, they help with bonding. And a number that we're going to look at a lot is eight, okay? So um, over here, chlorine has seven valence electrons. So chlorine um, is going to do... A, what it can, chlorine has been shown to make bonds so that it gets eight valence electrons. Calcium, on the other hand, um, only has two outer electrons. If it wanted to get eight, because eight is great, it would have to get six more, which is hard to do. So what calcium does instead of gaining electrons is just loses, woohoo, see you later, its outer two outer electrons, and then look, it has eight in the level that came before that. Okay, so ions that form. Um, happen because atoms lose or gain electrons to make bonds. The valence electrons are the electrons that are lost or gained. Oh, look, let's talk about chlorine again. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, so chlorine will make a negative one ion and be a chloride ion. Chloride, so you change the N to I-D-E. And the chloride ion would be exactly the same except a six right there, and then this energy level is full of valence electrons. Calcium, on the other hand, would make a plus two ion, like I said before, and instead of, because um, it has two valence electrons, and if it loses those, see you later, goodbye, then calcium would end in 3P6, right? So calcium is plus two. Nickel, okay, nickel. Nickel is going to lose its valence electrons, so nickel could be, whoops, hey, that's not nickel. Nickel can be a plus two ion, okay? And so if these go away, then you would just write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3p8, and you'd be talking about the nickel ion. Woo. Okay, so let's play. What element am I? So you look at this, and you assume it's not an ion because it says element, and you count 10, 18, 19. So there are 19 electrons. What element has 19 electrons? Come on, help me out. What element has 19 electrons? I know you're looking at a periodic table, right? It's potassium. Potassium. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I <laughs> get it. All right. Okay, let's look at this one. We have 20 electrons. What element has 20 electrons? Hey, we just looked at that one. It's calcium. Hey, wasn't that fun? Okay. How about what ion am I? Da, da, da. So, this is the element. All right, the second electron was gained. So now this is the ion. So we went from nine, valen nine electrons total to 10 electrons, but we didn't change the nucleus. So this is the F minus ion. Whoa. That's like the worst grade to get, right? So anyway, this is called the fluoride ion. So this over here is fluorine. Fluorine, because it has nine electrons. And then this is fluoride. Fluoride has ten, uh, 10 electrons because it gains one to be a negative ion. Okay, so there's always exceptions uh, to stuff. Electrons, some electron configurations don't match what you expect they will do. Okay, it's mostly only for transition metals and they're more stable with half filled or full D sublevels. So let's talk about silver. You would expect, expect silver to have the configuration. Um, I'm going to do short just to save some time. Krypton um, 5s2 4d um, right expect but then what we see with scientific um, 
data is that Krypton's electron configuration is actually 5s1, 4d10. So what that means is that Krypton, instead of putting two electrons, here, let me do that here. Instead of putting two electrons here, and then 95 boxes, and then nine electrons here, those are electrons here, there you go. okay. I'm sorry, that should be nine. Hey, where did you put electron in the box? Seriously? Okay, so I already do it. Um, whoa, come back. Um, this is why they take so long, right, Harvey? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Instead of doing this, um, Krypton, I say Krypton, Silver takes that one outer uh, valence electron and puts it here. And so it'll look like this, 5s1. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is actually Krypton's, I said Krypton again, Silver's electron configuration. All right. So this is um, more stable to for Silver to be filling the 4D sublevel and only putting one in the 5S. Chromium similar. So let me do Chromium's electron configuration. Um, expect Chromium to use to have, um, so Chromium CR. <laughs> Chromium 3 and then 4s2, 3d4. Um, but actually, chromium does, that's a bracket, 4s1, 3d5. So it would look more like this. And 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is more stable for chromium. Also, some ions do that as well. Okay, so groups 3 to 12 on the periodic table, right, plus all metals, um, always lose electrons to be ions. But these in particular, these ones, 3 to 12, can form more than one ion, even though they'll always be positive. Let's talk about one. So here's titanium. Titanium has um, well, 22 um, total electrons, and so 22 protons, so 22 electrons. So when titanium goes to lose electrons, it's going to lose its... Uh, four s electrons first because those are the valence ones. So those go away first. So titanium can have a plus two ion. And that exists in nature. Woo, we can explain it. Now titanium can also have a plus four ion. Whoa, how the heck can that happen? It loses its valence electrons and becomes a plus two. Well, it can also lose its 3D, two of it, its two 3D electrons to become a plus four ion. Way to go titanium. Okay. So make sure you read the book. Here are the questions I promised you. All right. And um, make sure you keep an eye on your electrons. Uh, just to review, here's some things that could help. And take care.